Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the relationship between healthy dopamine levels and a healthy libido and what you can do about it. If you've been following our videos for any length of time, then you know that we talk about dopamine rather frequently. In fact, we have a couple of different videos here on the channel that talk about dopamine more in depth. And one of the key features of dopamine, mostly explained through its effects on the central nervous system and its effects primarily on metabolism through androgen synthesis, dopamine is ultimately essential for good health. And one key aspect that I talk about so often of good health, one of the major biomarkers or major indicators of good health is a healthy sex drive or a strong libido. The way that I see it and practitioners of Chinese medicine and any competent physiologist or even doctor would probably agree that a healthy libido is a surefire sign of a good robust metabolism and good overall health. And again, this has a lot to do with the hormonal balance or profile in your body and how efficiently your metabolism is working. Now, the big question for this video is exactly how does dopamine affect our libido and our sex drive and our overall reproductive health? And there's a very simple explanation for this. Dopamine, first and foremost, tends to antagonize serotonin. So generally speaking, dopamine promotes an increased rate of metabolism so it boosts the metabolism and pushes it in that direction whereas serotonin tends to lower the metabolism and suppress the metabolic rate and as the metabolism increases so does the synthesis of various sex steroids vice versa so for example if dopamine levels are low there tends to be a higher level or amount of serotonin and higher serotonin through its anti-metabolic effects also decreases the synthesis of sex steroids like testosterone. So another way of looking at this, as I've mentioned in other videos in the past, is that dopamine is a precursor to testosterone. So typically, the higher the dopamine, the higher the testosterone levels. Whereas on the other hand, the lower your dopamine levels are, usually the higher the serotonin is and the slower the metabolism is, and this dramatically decreases the synthesis of those sex steroid hormones that you need to have a robust, healthy sex drive. Taking this whole concept a step further, peeling back one more layer, looking at the specific antagonist role of dopamine to serotonin, basically how does dopamine keep serotonin in check, is through its inhibitory effect on the enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase. So tryptophan hydroxylase is basically the rate limiting enzyme that turns tryptophan into serotonin. So by inhibiting this enzyme, you're going to actually ultimately keep your serotonin levels lower. So you're not going to be dramatically increasing the rate or conversion of tryptophan into serotonin, thus keeping serotonin in check. And this is actually how a lot of the dopaminogenic drugs work. So anybody that tends to take a dopamine boosting medication is actually experiencing the increase of libido as one positive side effect through this exact mechanism. However, the good news is that there are very simple and natural ways to not just boost dopamine, but to specifically inhibit or lower the tryptophan hydroxylase and therefore lower serotonin throughout your body, which is going to have a beneficial effect on your entire metabolism. So increased libido and sex drive is just one positive side effect of this, but also as you increase the rate of your metabolism, you're going to be able to lose weight more easily or achieve an ideal body mass index. You're gonna put on muscle more efficiently. You're gonna have more energy. It's obviously going to boost your mood amongst many other beneficial side effects of a healthy metabolism. So now the second big question of the day is, how do we do it? How do we increase dopamine, lower or inhibit the enzyme, tryptophan hydroxylase, and keep serotonin in check? Now there's actually a couple of very simple things that you can do and a lot of them actually involve just not doing common things. So there's a couple of different things that we've been told in at least the Western modern world that are healthy to do and they couldn't be more opposite from healthy. <laughs> Something that I observe is that a lot of the so-called healthy activities and the ways to get healthy here in the West is kind of backwards. For example, and diving into some of these tips one by one, cardiovascular exercise is one of the worst things I think that you could do for your body, at least in terms of physical exercise and physical stress and strain. Any form of cardiovascular exercise, whether that's long distance running, some sort of intense like HIIT training or anything along those lines, marathons, 
triathlons, those sorts of things where you're in a state of hyperventilation. You're sort of dying, gasping for air. Basically, really long, intense durations of exercise increases not just stress substances like cortisol and adrenaline, which break down and catabolize your body. Cardiovascular exercise dramatically increases this rate limiting enzyme, tryptophan hydroxylase, and increases serotonin, which is going to downregulate your metabolism. In fact, I see in my personal practice all the time, and you probably have too, women especially who are cardiovascular athletes, women who love to run a lot all the time, do marathons, triathlons, etc tend to not get their period and are pushing the boundaries of infertility. And again, this has a lot to do with the long-term anti-metabolic or metabolic suppressing effects of cardiovascular exercise and the increased rate and production of stress substances like serotonin. So one of the first things I generally recommend people doing or one of the first things I sort of bring up in people's lifestyles who have fertility issues, low libido, or any signs of stress in a low functioning metabolism is to take a look at their exercise or their activity levels. If there's somebody who's incredibly sedentary, obviously just getting up and going for a walk is going to be beneficial. But in this particular case, and a lot of the times, more often, I actually see people that exercise too intensely than I do run into people that don't exercise at all. So both of these things can be stressful on the body, being completely sedentary and sitting indoors all day, but also somebody that's running eight miles every single day, they are also putting a stress on their body. And in this case are increasing the functioning of tryptophan hydroxylase, which is increasing serotonin and dramatically decreasing androgen production. So that's one place to look at. If you're somebody with little to no libido, perhaps you are stressing your body via exercise. Getting into tip number two, because these two are sort of correlating, it's actually been found that caffeine supplementation, just standard good old caffeine, can actually inhibit the increased rate of tryptophan hydroxylase through exercise-induced stress. So this is really good because I'm not saying to not exercise altogether. And the last thing I'd want to do is tell anybody to stop doing something they love, even if it's stressing their body out. You know, that's ultimately up to you in the end of the day. So I always try to look for things that can help balance out somebody's lifestyle and mitigate the stressful effects from certain things that they're encountering. So in my opinion, caffeine is a wonder substance. It has many benefits, many of those which I talk about in this particular video and other videos here on the channel. And one of the most amazing things that caffeine does, although it's said to cause stress in the body, actually has an anti-stress effect. And this study is just pointing out one example of that. So again, caffeine actually is going to inhibit the rate of tryptophan hydroxylase, thus protecting your body from the stress of excessive serotonin, specifically during exercise. But moving forward, keep in mind that any of the stressful effects from these specific things, whether it's exercise stress or dietary stress, can all also be caused by psychological stress. So as always, keeping your total stress levels to a minimum is going to be key because your body generally perceives all stressors in a very similar fashion. So whether you're psychologically stressed or you're stressed because you're running 20 miles, your body's going to respond hormonally and chemically in a very similar way. So just keep that in mind that Psychological stress, chronic mental and emotional stress can kill your libido as well. So as always, getting a handle on your mental and emotional stress is key, so definitely utilize the videos we have here on the channel in relationship to that. Moving along though, there are a couple specific things I wanna get into that could help you decrease the serotonin in your body and specifically inhibit this enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase. Now one of the first things, and I talk about this on my personal YouTube channel, is consuming only egg whites. This is like cardiovascular exercise, another common misconception in the health and wellness world here in America is that avoiding the consumption of whole eggs and the egg yolks is healthy for you, it's good for your heart. However, consuming just the egg white is a really easy way to increase the rate of tryptophan hydroxylase. In fact, only egg whites, I think the egg white itself contains this enzyme, tryptophan hydroxylase, which can lead to a serotonin excess. 
So only consuming the egg white, especially raw, is going to be a bad idea because it's actually the egg white that has all of the tryptophan in it and specifically that enzyme. So if you look up online what are the foods highest in tryptophan, you'll probably see meat and eggs somewhere on that list. But just keep in mind that eggs are only high in tryptophan, more so just the egg white itself especially when it's raw. So you can get around this by eating the egg as nature intended. Eat the whole egg and ideally cook your egg and leave the yolk kind of runny. If you cook the egg white, that can destroy that enzyme and not only prevent the excessive tryptophan and serotonin, but it can help protect you from a biotin deficiency as well because that enzyme can bind to biotin leading to a deficiency. So basically, my second simple tip here next to the other ones we talked about is when it comes to your egg consumption, if you're somebody who eats eggs on a regular basis, and let's say you're that stereotypical person who goes for a run and then comes home and eats some egg whites, bad idea. Be sure to consume the whole egg and cook that egg white. Moving along, I have one more dietary tip in regards to keeping the tryptophan and serotonin low, and that is looking at the consumption of meat. Meat is often considered to be really high in tryptophan, and that is true. However, we here in America tend to eat meat in a very similar way that we eat our eggs and our milk. We try to remove certain natural factors from it. You know, we try to take the fat out of the milk or take the yolk out of the egg as if it were made unnaturally. And very similarly with meat, it's not that consuming meat is unnatural. I would argue that personally. It's the way that we eat meat here in America. In any Aboriginal traditional culture, meat is not consumed the way it is consumed here in the West where basically 20% of the animals use just the muscle tissue and the heads, the ligaments, the legs, all of the various organs and glands are, and bones are all thrown away. So we eat a very small portion of the animal and specifically looking at muscle tissue, like a chicken breast is high in tryptophan. However, this amino acid profile would otherwise be naturally balanced out if you ate the whole animal which is how I think nature intended. Traditionally, animals and fish, for example, were eaten pretty much nose to tail. The whole thing were consumed. So traditionally, if you ate a chicken, you pretty much ate the whole thing. You ate the neck and the thyroid gland, you ate the feet, all the skin, all the bones and gelatinous cuts were typically thrown into a soup and you got the whole nutritional profile of the animal. And as I talk about quite frequently, the gelatinous parts of animals contain high levels of glycine and proline, which actually oppose and keep other amino acids like tryptophan in balance. So when you're only eating the muscle tissue, you're getting an excessive amount of tryptophan and that's going to lead to obviously elevated levels of serotonin. So in my understanding, you can avoid all of the problems that have ever been blamed on meat by just eating it in a traditional fashion. So when it comes to eating meat, I would highly recommend avoiding the conventional means of eating meat here in America. Don't just eat steaks and breasts and tenderloins. Make sure you're getting the shank and the oxtails and eat the feet in a soup and eat the organs when you can. And if you can't do that at the very least, put two scoops of gelatin into warm water when you're eating something like a steak and drink that on the side, again, to balance out the tryptophan so that way you're not suppressing your metabolism and causing a stress response in your body. In fact, this is one of the major problems that I see with the famous carnivore diet is that they're only eating meat tissue, the muscle meat. And this is actually going to lead to a spike in the tryptophan hydroxylase and the conversion of tryptophan into serotonin. And serotonin actually triggers the secretion of cortisol. So a lot of times those all meat diets, at least if they're devoid of the gelatinous cuts of meat and they're not consuming any gelatin, can actually lead to an increased spike of cortisol. So if you're not gonna have bone broth and the gelatinous cuts of meats, just make sure you're supplementing a collagen or gelatin supplement. All right, guys, so that brings today's video to a close. To very quickly recap, dopamine's libido boosting effects are actually mostly through its inhibitory effects on the enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase, which keeps serotonin levels low.
because when serotonin becomes high, this leads to a dramatic decrease synthesis of the dopamine into the androgenic sex steroids like testosterone that you need not just for a healthy libido and sex drive, but good overall metabolic function. So if you're suffering from a low libido or any symptom of a hypometabolic state, one simple thing that you're going to want to focus on is keeping serotonin levels low, and you can achieve that through inhibiting this enzyme, tryptophan hydroxylase. And now you have a couple of very simple things that you can do to achieve this. However, that does bring this video to a close. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos just like this if you haven't already. And if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out our blog and our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.